There's a question about Eric. Did he, did he practice yesterday with you guys? Uh, Eric was, yesterday was like a walkthrough, so he was out there. Um, but the, the guys don't, weren't doing a whole lot in terms of, of uh, intense stuff. Do you anticipate him practicing this week? Uh, I think he will. Uh, we'll see. Probably get, uh, get Monday was the walkthrough. Yesterday, yesterday he was out there, but he didn't. He didn't do everything. But I do think he'll be be back at some point in the week. I just allowed him to sort of explode the last couple of weeks. Seventeen catches, I think, in the last three games. What has he done so well? He's just. I mean, he's such a hard worker. He's the kind of guy that if you uh, if you observe him, really, his whole career here, you would say that guy's going to be really good because his habits are so good in terms of the way that he runs routes, the speed at which he practices, um, the extra work that he puts in, his desire to be really good. So it's, it's really just, you know, with guys like that, it's just kind of a matter of time because their, their habits are, are such that you just know that they're gonna, they're gonna break through when the opportunity arises. And uh, I think everyone was excited to see him, you know, have those balls come his way, which doesn't always happen at, at, at the tight end position, especially not in that volume. Uh, so it was cool to see both, you know, the balls come that way, him to be ready for it, and him to make some of the plays he did. Uh, it was an outstanding game for him. It was, it was very cool to see. He deserves to have that kind of success. Angelique? Jake, uh, Jay, can you explain what happened on the, the Brad Robbins? I mean, was it just a, a bad, is that what Yeah, he, uh, as he was dropping the ball to, uh, to be able to punt it, uh, like releasing it to punt it, he uh, just lost his grip on it, and uh, you know felt like the uh, the defensive linemen that were in, they were in their defensive stay, they were relatively close to him, uh, which they were, and uh, he was aware of the situation like he always is in terms of where the sticks are, and was able to uh, you know try to make an effort to get a first down, but just a kind of an unusual play that's unfortunate uh, that he really, I mean. I, I've known him for a long time, really long time, and can think of like very, very small amount of times where anything like that has happened. So uh, unfortunate miscue by a guy who's just really trustworthy and you don't see stuff like that from him very often. Michael? Uh, from your perspective, the, the kicks at the end of the half by Jake where they just kept calling timeout after timeout after timeout, what goes through your mind and, and what do you say to him in those timeouts to make sure he stayed calm the way that he did? Uh, I didn't say anything to him, um, not, nothing at all, I don't, I don't think. Uh, he's just, he's not the guy you want to ice because uh, it's, it's not going to affect him. He's so composed, uh, very confident in, in um, both Wags and Brad in terms of the snap and the hold. And uh, yeah, he's just, he's so composed. It, it, he's not really a guy that you need to calm down or anything like that. Uh, he's he's really special and he's playing at a high level. Daniel, yeah, you touched on Eric's work ethic, but I'm curious throughout this season, where do you think he's grown from a, a technical standpoint? Uh, that's a tough question. He it kind of not not as like a cop out answer, but the way that he approaches things, he because of of his intensity, he gets better at everything uh, incrementally. When you see um, the way that he's catching the ball, that obviously jumps out because he, he is catching it really well. Uh, he's sustaining blocks better than he has ever has before. Uh, he's a guy who produces such great force on contact because uh, he bends so well, he gets great leverage. And he strikes people, I mean, like a hammer. And then sometimes he falls off the contact or doesn't necessarily finish through the whistle on the same guy. When you watch him closely, you'll notice this year, he's, he's done a lot better job in terms of, okay, making great initial contact, knocking the guy back, and then finishing on the man as the, as the play finishes. So that's been cool to see. Uh, but really, it's hard to pinpoint any one area just because uh, the growth has been, been uh, pretty well-rounded. On your right here, Rainer. Jim, Jim has talked a lot about the officiating after the game. How much is that talked about internally, and how much do you scout the officials going into the game? Uh, going into a game, we, we are aware of who the officials are and if there are any type of uh, like noteworthy trends. Typically, there's nothing that jumps out that much uh, in terms of one crew to the next. But if there is something, that would be something our players would be aware of. But aside from, from doing that, uh, we don't spend a whole lot of time in here talking about um, you know good calls or, or 
potential bad call. 